so we come to the final track event of this fourth day of the European Championships, and we have the men's 1500 meters. 13 men have qualified for this final. There's the lineup Tesfe, Duma, Amduni, Sasinek, Emmanuel, Neves, Philip Ingebrigtsen, the first of the two brothers in this lineup, Whiteman, Debjani, Bustos, Kimberly, Kimeli, rather, Ingebrigtsen, Henrik the older, and Carvalho. That's the field, men's 1500 meters. No really quick times in Europe this year. No one's broken 3.35. And several who are capable of it at their best form. And we are introduced there to Henrik Ingebrigtsen, who won in 2012, second last time. And Richard Duma will go for the Netherlands. Well, at times he's one of the slower men in the field, but who knows what sort of tactics may be employed by the runners in this race. I'd like to think it would be a good, as I would call it, honest race. Tesfe, well, he is the man perhaps to beat. He's the fastest man in Europe this year. Although well, those competing, that is, 3.35.05 to his credit. He was fifth in Zurich. Also a, a world championship fifth placer. Back after a spell out through injury. I just called back just a little bit too eager there. Just one small note, this is a 13-man field with Bussinotti Neves Jr. of Italy being promoted to the final after he fell in the semis. Yes, indeed. He ended up with a time of 3.50-ish, but um, takes his place, yeah. Jake Whiteman, a former European junior champion, runs for Great Britain, as does Lee Emanuel, a European indoor silver medalist. So off they go, the 13-man field for the 1,500 metres. So just uh, running quite fast to get position. Let's see whether it continues at that pace or whether they settle back. Depends who wants to really take it on. Not easy to pick out a favourite in this lineup. It is indeed slowing at the front with Carvalho, who's got such a brilliant record in the cross country, in fact. European junior and under 23 level. Champion there, yeah, it's slowed right up now. So we shall see how this transpires. The uh, Spaniard, David Bustos, former European junior champion, like Whiteman, who's on the outside there, as they come up with three laps to go. But um, no one seems to be really keen to take this on. They come up to the 400 meter point, and it's going to be slow at that point. The Dutchman Duma tucked in in second place there on the inside. As they go through in uh, 63-5. Carvalho still leading at that point. Bastos there, the Spaniard, then Duma, then Neves, then Amdumi and Debjani, Whiteman, Sassenek, and then the Ingebrigtsens holding back at the moment. But, um, just jogging around at the present stage. This is going to be one of those races where there's a fierce bus stop later and we have to see who's got it well a move right round the outside by Lee Emanuel of Britain well, only onto the shoulder he hasn't decided to take it right from the front at, at this stage but he's making sure he's out of trouble and Whiteman also is running wide there and Tesfaye is also deciding to get up there so a lot of men just jockeying for positions a little bit Kimeli the Belgian you can see just moving through the ground but there's only what six meters to separate them with two laps to go in this 800 meters still Carvalho leading at a very steady pace with Bustos Duma the Dutchman rather tucked in there he could get boxed if he stays there Bustos just outside him some of the other men choosing to run a little wider as we'll take a check on the time. 2.10.43, so it remains very slow at 800 metres. And it's still Fabian Carvalho, the Frenchman, who leads them on. Lee Emanuel of Britain on his shoulder. Also Tesfaye there, and then the Dutchman still on the inside in fourth place. But there's a bit of pushing and jockeying for positions there. Whiteman, who looked very good in his heat, the former European junior champion, is keeping clear of trouble on the outside. The two British athletes prominent. Emmanuel just tucking in on Cavallo's shoulder. Still no positive move as they come up towards the bell. This is going to be quite a last lap here. Tesfe maybe just shading ahead. Well, with Cavallo. Still Cavallo at the bell in about 2.55. And all to play for. Whiteman ranging into position on the outside. And Manuel as well, the two British athletes. Manuel just a little bit back. Whiteman's in the perfect place at the moment. 
Jake Whiteman is in the lead at 1,200 metres, and he's really starting to go for it now. But he's being resisted on the inside by Carvalho. Chess phase there, and Duma is still in contention for a medal, with the Dutch crowd urging him on. It's Jake Whiteman, son of Jeff Whiteman and Susan Tooby, two distinguished internationals. Tess Faye on his shoulder, the fastest man in Europe. And here comes Duma as well, as the crowd get ecstatic. Whiteman holding the inside line, Tess Faye just behind him, then Duma, and then the Frenchman trying to come through again on the outside. But there's a burst right from the back, though, as well. Whoa, what a race that was. <laughs> it's Philip in Ingebrigtsen it's, followed it's by Buster. Brother. That's the gold and silver medalist. Yep. Philip Ingebrigtsen, the younger brother, made a wonderful charge through the field to take it. Henrik may be the one who's won the fame before, but now it's Philip. And the pair of them have been European champions at 1,500 metres. And Duma ended up fifth, having looked all over as a possible medalist before then. As indeed did Whiteman, who ended up in seventh place. Wow, so Philip Ingebrigtsen came through with David Bustos of Spain and also Henrik Ingebrigtsen. The two brothers get medals and both of them finished so hard they didn't seem to be in contention coming into the start of the home straight. Well, we knew Henrik Ingebrigtsen had a fantastic finish. He was the 2012 European champion at this distance. We didn't know that much really about Philip Ingebrigtsen. He's shown well on the European circuit this year. We were looking, as we can see here, it was very boxed for a large part of the race. The early stage of the race it was very slow. And here we see... Oh, this it's is... Whiteman and Tesfaye and Duma, and they all finish outside the medals, as did Amdumi, who's trying to make his way around. Now, here is Philip Ingebrigtsen on the red. Henrik Ingebrigtsen in the dark glasses on the inside. And look at the sprint finish by Philip Ingebrigtsen. Charging past those men who we were looking in contention. So too did Bustoff, so too did Henrik Ingebrigtsen. So the, the men who were in contention, the top four, 50 metres to go, were passed by those three. And if you look at this race at 70 metres, we just seeing it. Henrik Ingebrigtsen had to go through four lanes to the outside to come round. He didn't have a clear line at all until he got out. He was moving sideways, almost crab-like at one point, <laughs> but he was moving like a very fast crab, it also has to be said. But his brother was better placed yes, and uh, really he had seized a clear the opportunity. Line. Yes. But it wasn't a quick time, of course. Uh, 3.46.65 in the end. Philip Ingebrigtsen taking goal for Norway, then David Bustos, then Henrik Ingebrigtsen, and both the Ingebrigtsen can say they've been European champions at 1,500 metres. I wonder how many pairs of brothers can say that, two separate brothers, European champions at the same distance. That's one for you to look up in your stats books. <laughs> As you can possibly hear, Philip Ingebrigtsen talking to the stadium commentator, saying it's just crazy as we're looking at the final stages of the race once again. Well, it was a terribly tedious race for the first 1,100 metres, but what a fantastic and enthralling last lap. What a race. Bustos came from nowhere as well over the final 200 metres. I think Henrik Ingebrigtsen is remonstrating with Duma about how he was blocked there coming into the home straight. Oh, well. Well, yes, but that's bound to happen in such a slowly run race, I'm afraid. You know, they can't all be in the perfect position when they're all in contention. But these big men are celebrating. Yes, there was no blocking and bashing around of these big men. All smiles. I think everybody was happy with what they got out of that, to be yeah, honest. Paul Ford. Malachowski regaining his European title with 67.06. Philip Milanov, second consecutive.